So I'm sure many right now are likely cross-shopping between the 13-inch and 15-inch MacBook Air since they've just been refreshed with the M3 chipset, and whilst these are basically the same computers for the most part, there are a few key differences to note, and so let's delve into which one you should buy. Beginning with the pretty obvious change, we have the display sizes. One is 13.6 inches, the other is 15.3 inches, and while I know which you prefer ultimately comes down to your personal preferences, for me, the display alone makes a 15 inch absolutely worth getting. For many years, I've wanted a larger version of the MacBook Air because I personally find the base level chipsets plenty good for my use. And so if I could get the larger screen, the 16 inch offers, but without the additional cost, it would be perfect. And I'm glad that's now a thing in the range. And as someone who's tried both the 13 inch and the 15 inch, I can tell you guys, the larger screen does make a big difference to my workflow. And particularly for editing, I've appreciated having the larger display. Not only that, but for content consumption, it's obviously better. And multitasking is much better because it feels a lot more spacious. Now, the next thing you might be wondering about is the increase in dimensions because of the display increase. And surprisingly, it's not as substantial as you might initially believe. This is exactly why I've been wanting a 15 inch air for so many years because the pro models are thick chunky boys and so because this is a MacBook Air it's still very light and thin for its size. I believe compared to the 13 inch it's 270 grams heavier and 0.02 centimeters thicker but really guys that's not a massive compromise for the much larger display you get. Again, this is just my opinion. You should probably compare both of these in store and see which one works for you. And I can't, of course, argue with the fact the 13 inch size is probably the most popular form factor for laptops. We've had this size option for years. And so for those who are comfortable with that size option and care more about portability, you can't go wrong with the smaller size. You know what else you can't go wrong with, guys? Subscribing to the channel, of course. I would greatly appreciate it and would bring you the latest commentary about the world of Apple right to subscription box. So please consider it. It would be appreciated. We're trying to hit our next milestone of 16,000 subscribers. So join the Saran Bike gang now. But let's now move on to an upgrade I'm sure anyone could appreciate. And that's better speakers. The 15 inch has six of them compared to four on the smaller size and also include force cancelling woofers. And yeah, in terms of data usage, the larger chassis with the additional speakers definitely makes a big difference. It's a treat to kick back and watch movies on this, especially along with the larger display. This will be a big selling point for the 15 inch since I'm sure many are using entry level Macs for consuming content on. So yes, I love the speakers. Now one would expect battery life to be better on the 15 inch since that is the case usually for a lot of Apple's larger size options. For example, the 16 inch Pro offers better endurance than the 14 inch and the 15 Pro Max offers better endurance than the Pro but surprisingly, the battery life here is exactly the same as the smaller 13 inch. Now, why is that the case? Well, if I were to guess, A, the display is a lot more power hungry than I expected. B, they couldn't give us a massive battery inside because it needs to be super thin. But also C, Apple doesn't want this cannibalizing cells of the 14 inch M3 MacBook Pro. If you want the best battery life Apple offers on a MacBook, they definitely want to upsell you to that. Or even, of course, the $2,500 16 inch, even though that's overkill for 99% of consumers. However, do not worry about battery life because 18 hours of endurance is still plenty good for most consumers. For example, when editing on these MacBooks for two hours, it went from 100% to 87% which is just incredible. Back when I was using Intel, I would be close to dead by the time I finish editing. And so this is easily the best thing about Apple Silicon Max. They last forever and for regular consumers, you're gonna love this about these machines in my opinion. Also because the battery life is so good, the battery health long-term has been great for me. I'm at 88% on my M1 Air, which of course offers very similar battery performance. And remember, I've had this M1 Air for three years. So the fact it's still 88%, is incredible. Now performance wise the 15 inch does actually perform ever so slightly better because of its larger chassis. You can see this with the benchmark results and also the 15 inch does hold up slightly better under full CPU loads. Now is this something you're realistically going to notice in terms of regular usage? No, I doubt it and while you could benefit from getting the 15 inch if you have a more intensive workflow, I wouldn't get the 15 inch hoping it has much better performance because 
at the end of the day, it is the same M3 chip inside. Though I do want to mention something regarding chipsets. The 15 inch does come with the non-bin 10 core GPU as standards, whereas the base 13 inch has a binned 8 core GPU. And also I thought I'd mention that Apple has actually given us two NAND chips back on the base M3, which is great news I'm sure for many. Now personally, I thought the whole single NAND controversy with the M2 was a little overblown because most regular consumers are not going to care about this. But hey, I will take this win. Apple's giving us better speeds with the base model. That's always nice. And so I'm glad they listened. One small difference is the larger trackpad, but that's to be expected. And so now we come to the crucial difference, which is pricing. So technically, there is only a $100 difference if you upgrade the 13 inch to the 10 core GPU. But even if you compare the prices of the base models, I think the $200 jump for the 15 inch is kind of justified because the upgrades you get with the speakers and the larger display do make a difference. However, I do want to mention if you don't care about the performance upgrades the M3 offers or Wi-Fi 6C and better external display supports, which I think applies to a lot of you guys considering this is just a usual year of year spec improvement, you should absolutely consider the M2 13 inch and 15 inch, which have significantly come down in price. Yes, you can't buy the 15 inch M2 officially from Apple, but it is on their refurbished site for around a thousand dollars, which is a very good deal. It should also be available from third parties as a clear existing stock. And obviously, if you don't care about the 15 inch, the 13 inch M2 is still sold on the store for $9.99 and is available for even less on the refurb store for $8.49 and should get discounts from third parties. And also consider the fact a 16 gig M2 model might be the same price as a new 8 gig M3 model and ultimately guys, RAM is going to make a massive difference to the longevity of this machine. I think having more RAM is way more crucial than having a new chipset and so saving some money on that upgrade and going with the older machine does make a lot of sense. And ultimately, as I said, the M3 models are not that different to the M2. So yes, if you like the 13 inch and the 15 inch, consider the M2 instead. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching. It's been a while since we covered a ridiculous rumor that absolutely makes no sense, but we have one today that fits the bills, so let's delve in. So the overall consensus regarding the upcoming iPhone SE 4 has been the fact it should be based on the iPhone 14, which makes sense since Apple usually recycles older iPhones and the iPhone 14 design, which really is basically a recycled iPhone 13, is exactly that. But of course, it is very rare for the leak world to completely agree on one rumor. There's always someone that comes out of...